She's an award-winning writer, a hunting guide, archery and rifle instructor, keynote speaker, and all-around outdoors woman who encourages you to get outside, hunt, fish, shoot, and savor all that life has to offer. And now, here's your host, Mia Anstein. Hey guys, hello, hello. I'm happy to be visiting with you again. Welcome to the Mac Outdoors podcast. If it's your first time stopping here, then I'm happy that you found me. And if you enjoy the show, I hope that you'll subscribe before you go. To my listeners who have been coming back again, thank you for showing up. And today I want to talk to you about a couple different things. I'm going to talk about a little bit from the previous episode. I did have some feedback. And then I also want to talk to you about outdoors activities in the winter time. So we'll be right back. This winter, stay warm from head to toe with WSI Sports' heater gear layers. Use Leah's affiliate code, LLCO10, at WSISports.com and get 10% off your order. All products are proudly made in the USA. WSI Sports is bringing back pride in American-made clothing. That code, once again, LLCO10 for 10% off at WSISports.com. In our last episode, I talked to you a little bit about a a little fun fact, and I've been trying to give some fun facts for those that are newer or actually some experienced hunters and outdoorsmen or women that maybe don't know a little bit of fun facts. But in my fun facts, I talked to you about cows and bulls and bucks and so forth. But in there, I used a term that I actually correct people about a lot, and that is antlers versus horns. I said they have horns when I was referring to a buck or a bull. I'm not sure which, but regardless, I want to talk to you today about the difference between antlers and horns because they are not the same thing, and we definitely need to talk about that. Antlers are a type of bone and horns are actually a type of keratin. So they are definitely not the same thing. Make sure that you know that you are antler hunting, not horn hunting because antlers are shed and horns are not. However, antelope are an exception. And when I say antelope, I mean pronghorn antelope which can shed the sheath of their horn. In a future episode, we will be talking about that in detail. Stay tuned for that. I also want to share a listener comment that was sent to me. And this is from somebody who said regarding our past episode and talking about hunting for food and archery hunting. And the biggest feedback that I got, this isn't the only feedback that I got, but it's one that I wanted to share because most of the feedback was if you're hunting for food, you may not want to use a bow. You might want to use a rifle. But one listener shared that his grandmother used to hunt for food. And so this is something we don't hear about a lot. We think that women are new to hunting, but that's not true. I think women just hunted for food and didn't take pictures of getting dinner and so forth and actually back way back when we didn't have cell phones to take a selfie with the bunny we got and I say bunny because this person said that his grandma hunted for food she took a shotgun and she would shoot rabbits and squirrels to feed her family and the grandma had seven children And she would bring squirrels and rabbits and make stew and other meals with the food that she got. And the big thing that I wanted to share on that is that it kind of goes back to episode 66 when we were talking about hunting for food with a bow that you also can use a shotgun. Always check your local regulations to see what small game is in season but you can not only make stews or porridges, you can also make shepherd's pies, pot pies, casseroles. You can make roasted 
things with small game animals. There are so many meals that you can create. If you are looking for recipe ideas, I do have a recipe section at my website. You can go over there to miaanstein.com click on the recipes tab. If there's a recipe that you don't see there, message me or leave a comment on that page. You can message me. The email is contact at miaanstein.com or you can message me on social media outlets. Look for Mia Anstein. I am on most platforms and let me know if you have some animal that you're looking for a recipe for because I do have other recipes that are not yet on the website. I am slowly and gradually working on getting all of that put up there, but it's just me and it takes some time to do that. So I'd be happy to help you any way I can. Just reach out. While you're over at the website, you can also click on the shop tab and look for different items that I suggest or recommend. And I'm mentioning this now because I wanted to talk to you about getting outdoors in the wintertime. It has been extremely cold, not just in Colorado. Colorado, we're pretty much used to it. Some people are not, some people are, but some people are just learning to get outdoors. And so I wanted to talk to you about getting out in the wintertime when there's cold weather. There are a lot of things we need to look for. And on my website, I have links to some of my favorite gear that you can also go and and view. So go to miaanstein.com to check that out. One of the number one things, not just in the winter time, but also in spring, summer, fall, whether we're hiking or hunting or whatever we're pursuing in the outdoors, footwear is extremely important. It can just ruin your day if you have bad shoes and you get a hot spot. And a hot spot is where you have a rub that starts to hurt and the hot spot occurs just before you're going to get a blister. So we don't want hot spots and we definitely don't want blisters. So you need to look at your footwear. Find some boots or shoes that are going to fit you well. And in the winter time, this is extremely important. We want insulated boots for winter time, but we also want to have this footwear that fits. You don't want something that fits too tight. And you also don't want something that's too big. So you need a good medium. You need to have a little bit of airspace around your toes. You don't want them crammed into a boot because if your boots are too tight, you're going to get chilled. It decreases the circulation in your appendages, in your toes, and it will cause you to get chilled and you will end up getting frostbite, which is something that you absolutely 100% do not want. So look for insulated hiking boots that fit well. That is a number one thing when you're outdoors in the winter time. Talking about appendages, you want some good gloves and you may want something lightweight or fleece this is an area where it's all about personal preference because i have friends that love gloves they like the fleece lined gloves which may be great for skiing or maybe snowshoeing if you've got poles stuff like that when i'm hunting and i'm outdoors I actually really like mittens. I like to be able to have my fingers together. They help warm one another. It seems to me personally, when I have gloves on and my fingers are separated from one another, I guess they get lonely. I don't know. I I hope you guys would share your comments with me about this and let me know if I'm just the only one who has this issue. But my hands stay so much more warm when I'm in a mitten. However, when we have mittens, we can't use our fingers to grasp and hold and do projects. So something that I do, you hear my WSI ads on my podcast. If you've listened before, I advocate for them very much. I'm not sponsored by them, but have an affiliate code, but I have a WSI heater gear glove that I will wear underneath another glove. And they don't per se heat, but they interact with your body temperature to keep you warm. And so I use the WSI liner gloves inside my regular glove, be it a lined leather glove, which are probably one of my favorites, because for me, when I have horses and lead ropes or reins, the leather gloves help hold on very well. So that's something that you can look to. 
You can also look to a wool glove. I have wool mittens that have the finger tabs and then the mitten folds over your fingers. So the fingers can be additionally together inside your glove and then I can flip them back when I need to lace something or tie something on my saddle when I need to do intricate work. Another thing with that type of glove is that you can also put a hand warmer in the top of those sometimes. So hand warmers are something that you may want to get. One thing with my wool mittens is that if they get wet, they still keep me warm. So you might want to look for some natural fibers and moisture wicking fibers for your gloves. I do have a set of gloves that I thought would be fabulous and I just tried them out again. I try them every winter for the past two or three winters, but they are a neoprene glove, kind of like a wetsuit material that I thought I might just love for maybe waterfowl hunting because they do allow me to grip the gun really well. With the wool glove, I can't grip a gun very well. So I've been trying these and quite honestly, I've used them when I'm out feeding the cattle and stuff and oh my gosh, my fingers get very chilled. So next time I head out, maybe I'll try using my WSI liner inside of those. Again, give me a comment if you have experience in that area and I'd like to hear what you have learned and then we can share it with other listeners and help one another. Hats are a must for me. I always wear hats. I'm kind of renowned for my wool hat that I wear. It was the one I had on when I was on the Field and Stream cover. It's a Wyoming Traders wool hat. And a lot of people say it's a Stormy Cromer, but it's basically a Stormy Cromer style. This style is a trapper hat it's a wool hat it has ear flaps and the one that i have is wyoming traders and why i chose the wyoming traders hat i do have some stormy cromer hats i have a collection of hats i could talk to you maybe i will later in a whole episode about hats i chose the wyoming trader hat because it fits my head well the stormy cromer hats seem to be a little more bubbled and they sit up too high and pop off my head so that's a personal preference thing again the wool hat keeps my head warm if it starts to snow and the hat gets wet i'm still warm because of the natural fibers in that wool hat so make sure you have a head covering a lot of body heat is emitted from your head and it can cause you to get chilled quite quickly if you don't have a hat. Something I love about ear flaps is it can keep my ears warm as well and then it has a cap bill on the front that keeps the snow out of my eyes as well as the sun. Being in the country and horseback and pseudo cowboy living life, I do wear a cowboy hat quite often. In the winter time, we wear felt hats because they are more thick than a straw hat and they help keep that heat in. Something that you might want to know is that with the hats, why I wear cowboy hats is not because I'm a cowboy or cowgirl. It is because it keeps the sun off of my face. And a lot of times people look at my darker complexion and they're like, oh, you don't get sunburned. But yes, I do get sunburned sometimes. But also the sun is very damaging to our skin and anybody needs to protect their skin, man, woman, dark, light, or otherwise. So that's a little tidbit about cowboy hats. We also need to look for a good jacket. Puffy jackets are very popular right now. And when you're looking at puffy jackets, we will look at a microfiber interior material, or you might want to look for a down interior material. One thing about the down is that when it gets wet, it gets very heavy. So does wool, but wool still keeps you warm. The down, it's going to collapse, so you need to make sure that the baffles in your jacket are a little bit larger. But when that down collapses in there, you do have air pockets where you can get chilled. The down also takes quite a bit of time to dry, whereas the 
microfiber materials will dry a little more rapidly. So those are some things that you need to take into consideration when you are looking at your puffy jackets. I also love wool jackets. As I said, the wool, if it gets wet, it still keeps you warm. A downfall is it does get pretty heavy. And nowadays, people think of wool as the old scratchy wool sweaters that used to irritate your skin and such. But I do have, I wear wool almost every day, even in the summertime. The wool helps with the moisture and it's just an all around different wool than what we grew up with years ago. What I wear most often is Vormi and it's a product, I'm not sponsored by them, but I just want to share it with you because I do wear it a lot and I tag it in my pictures on social media because I'm wearing it. I usually try to tag products so that you know what it is. People will message me and ask, what were you wearing? If I tag it, you just kind of know what it was. So I digress. With the Vormi, it's a different type of blend of thread that they use to make their wool products. So it's not itchy whatsoever. I don't have to wear a shirt under my wool shirt and so forth. And it's soft, very much different than what we wore years ago. I will maybe in a future episode do a whole thing about the Vormi gear because I could talk for quite a while about that. But today I just want to give you an overview of things that you must have when you are hiking or hunting in being in the outdoors in the cold weather. So, so far I've talked to you about footwear, gloves, hats, jackets, and I also want to talk to you about pants. One thing with pants is you can wear like an oil skinned pant, a uh, Carhartt canvas pant type material, maybe look for a Filson pant. Those are helpful, but then you're going to need to wear a base layer under that. And with pants, you can also look for maybe a snow pant, a uh, ski pant. Ski pants are designed for not sitting in the snow, but for moving through the snow. So keep that in mind. If you're going to be sitting in maybe snowmobiling, you're going to get wet if you're just wearing a ski pant. So the snowmobile pants are designed a little differently than a ski pant. And when you're hunting, if you're in a duck blind, you don't want to wear a ski pant, but you might want to wear a ski pant and then a rain gear over it. That's something you can do if noise isn't a factor. So keep that in mind. As far as base layers, WSI Sports makes heater gear. It's a fabulous base layer. You can also look to companies like Patagonia or Vormi and some of these that make the wool base layers. You don't, you don't want a cold air pocket under your jacket or under your pants. So that base layer is going to help keep you warm by protecting you from air pockets. Keep that in mind. With the base layers, as I said, WSI gear makes their heater gear. It is a microfiber type fabric. It's man-made, but it is moisture wicking. So when you're looking for base layers, look for moisture wicking. Do not have a cotton base layer. Layers are a must. I will say that you might get hot and you don't necessarily want to get sweaty because then if you're out moving and hiking and then you stop, you're going to get chilled. So make sure you have layers under your clothing and also take spare clothing with you. Take a backpack so you can carry your layers and take those on and off as you see fit. Don't let yourself get too sweaty and make sure that you have those moisture wicking materials for your base layers, so important. If you have questions on this episode, please reach out. Again, my email is contact at miaanstein.com or you can message me on social media outlets. I hope that you have enjoyed today's show and I look forward to talking to you again next week. Have a great one, bye guys. Hey, this is Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran, host of the Armed Lutheran Radio Podcast, reminding you that the podcast you're listening to is a proud member of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Check out all the great content at selfdefenseradio.net.